Hello everyone. Today we will be studying 2009 USAMO problem 4. It's a relatively easy USAMO problem. We will be using the Cauchy Schwartz inequality to prove this result. And let me just go ahead and remind you of that very important inequality. So the Cauchy Schwartz um, inequality. In fact, let's go ahead and derive it because I usually find myself in a position where I forget the direction of the inequality. So it's not as clear as the AMGM inequality to me sometimes. So um, one easy way to prove it is by looking into the inner product of two uh, two dimensional vectors. So let's go ahead and describe these vectors as A1, A2. This is a two dimensional vector here. And then B is another two dimensional vector, B1, B2. I will go ahead and define the inner product of these two vectors as A1, B1 plus A2, B2. Basically multiplying them component wise and then adding the result. So this is kind of like a sum product. Or alternatively, we also know that because these are vector entities, alternatively, if I know the length of these two vectors, I can just multiply these lengths and then multiply them with the, um, the angle between these two vectors. So that's kind of an alternative formula. So all you need to do to establish the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is to set these two uh, right-hand sides equal to each other and square both sides and remember that the length uh, the distance from a vector to the origin is just uh, the sum of squares of its components and the same thing for b therefore the left hand side so let's call it a1 b1 so we would have a1 b1 plus a2 b2 um, let's square both sides actually it will make our life simpler so we can get rid of the square root sign here so it would be a1 squared plus a2 squared um, b1 squared plus b2 squared um, um, times cosine theta now I know that cosine theta is a number between negative 1 and 1 if I go ahead and eliminate that from the right hand side it will make my right hand side bigger than the left hand side so therefore uh, a1 b1 plus a2 b2 squared is less than or equal to so that was the part that I usually confusing myself so a1 squared plus a2 squared b1 squared plus b2 squared and that's the celebrated cauchy schwartz inequality now let's go ahead and dive into the problem so if you would like to that might be the opportune moment to just uh, pause the video and try to see if you can somehow apply the cauchy schwartz inequality but do not try to immediately apply it to the left hand side because um, you will not get the result that you want. You can only apply it after you make some, uh, well, some modifications, let's say, some tricks. And even better than that, I highly recommend you prove this result, um, this statement, for n is equal to 2 first. And then once you can prove it, you can go ahead and try to prove it for n is greater than 2. In fact, that's exactly how I will proceed in my next page. I will first prove this result for n is equal to 2. And then I will try to see if I can find an analogous solution for n greater than 2. If I can, if I can implement a trick that will somehow reduce the problem in the case n greater than 2 into a problem where n is equal to 2, which we have already proved. And so that would actually solve the whole problem. Uh, without loss of generality, actually, uh, I would like to um, go ahead and order these numbers huh, in increasing order. So let's assume that huh, our numbers, our AIs are huh, ordered in that fashion. In fact, let me go ahead and let's call A1 the, the, the smallest element as small M and then um, the, the largest element here as capital M. The official solution also uses this notation. 
And by the way, this problem was proposed by Sam van der Velde, a great mathematician and a great educator. So, okay, so therefore, if you will, we can rewrite the problem statement here as the maximum of these numbers is capital M. And, um, and so basically the, the problem statement here can be equivalently stated as capital M is less than or equal to 4 little m. So we would like to prove this result over here. So let's start with the case n is equal to 2. So therefore the problem reduces to the following uh, uh, so we have m plus m, well, not the problem, actually, the condition, the given condition reduces to this, m plus 1 over capital M is uh, less than or equal to 2 plus 1 half squared, which is 5 over 2 squared, which is just 25 over 4. Now, it's pretty simple. All you do now is you can find, you can expand these fractions to get a common denominator, which will be little m, big M. And then you will have a little m plus big M on the numerator, but then it will square it. So therefore, this is equivalent to little m plus capital M squared divided by m little m capital M, which is less than or equal to 25 over 4. Because both little m and capital M are greater than 0, we can further rewrite this as 4 times m plus m capital M squared is less than or equal to, huh? I can do a cross product here, and you should easily get this. And finally, you can factorize all this expression here to ultimately get this very, very nice um, uh, result. Oh, actually, this is capital M here. You have little m times capital M again, minus 4 little m is actually less than or equal to zero but then when you look into it you just realize that the first term here is always greater than or equal to zero so it must be for this whole left hand side to be less than or equal to zero it must be that the second term is less than or equal to zero but then this immediately implies that m minus 4m huh, being less than or equal to zero is equivalent to saying that m is less than or equal to 4, capital M is less than or equal to 4, little m, and that proves uh, the, the statement of the problem for the case n is equal to 2. Now let's see if we can somehow extend this result to the case n greater than 2. So let's make a couple of observations here. So in this general case, in this general form, so remember this is our little m here, this is our capital M, this one is 1 over little m, and this one is 1 over capital M. When you look into it, it really feels like, um, I mean, this expression here is exactly the same as this expression here, except that you have some intermediate terms here, so like some middle terms here, that it would be really awesome if we can get rid of these midsections here. And that's where uh, the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality will come very handy. So let's go ahead and rewrite this condition on, on the following page. And then let's discuss how we can manipulate these two expressions to, to, to apply the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality to our favor. So let's go ahead and do that, I guess. So I'll, I'll start with the right-hand side this time. So we would have n plus 1 half um, squared is greater than or equal to, so this condition is given in the problem, a1 plus a2 plus dot dot dot, a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n times um, 1 over a1 plus 1 over a2 plus dot 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 plus 1 over a sub n minus 1 plus 1 over a sub n. And now, uh, well, obviously remember that um, this is just little m here, and this one is capital M. Again, this is little m, and this one here is capital M. Now, the trick is the following. What I will do is, I will go ahead and just, just rewrite this expression so that I exchange the first and the last term here in our second uh, 
um, product, right? So what I do is I rewrite this. So, so let's go back to the green color here. So I still have the first expression intact. So I didn't make any change on that one except to rename A1 and A sub N huh? as little M and capital M. And for the second expression, I will just exchange this first and last term here. So that therefore it will become 1 over capital M here plus um, well, you still have the medium middle terms, or that's a two actually, plus one over a sub n minus one plus one over little m. But then that's beautiful because now I can go ahead and apply the Cauchy Schwartz inequality huh, to my benefit. So what I would do is huh, so um, you can think of these expressions as square roots times square root one huh so there's as if there's an invisible one here one here all of these are one ones and then these expressions is square root m squared or square root a2 squared and so on so therefore applying the cauchy schwartz in the direction that you want so this would be greater than or equal to so the product of square root m times one over square root capital m so huh? so we have the uh, so I can put it inside the same square root sign here. So this is plus well the square root of a2 squared. So you have square root of a2 here, square root of 1 over a2. So therefore, this will just give you a 1. And then you will have a bunch of ones, including these two terms, right? And finally, square root of capital M here over square root of little m. And re uh, remember again that we got this inequality from Cauchy Schwartz. So now, uh, how many little ones here we have? We have n minus 2 of these. So now we can go ahead and uh, rewrite this expression again on the left-hand side. Well, actually, what I... Oh, we have the square here. So don't forget to put the square, huh? Cauchy Schwartz, it has a square here. Okay, so what I will do is, realizing I have a square here, I have a square, my directions are perfect. So I will take the square root of both sides easily because all these expressions are positive. So therefore, I have n plus one half is greater than or equal to uh, the same expression little m over capital m plus n minus two plus capital m over little m and now you can just do some simplification here this would imply that uh, sorry you can equivalent so the ends will cancel out you can move the two to the right hand side and guess what you have square root of little m over capital m plus square root of capital M over little m is actually less than or equal to 5 over 2. But that's not a surprising result at all. Let's just go one step further so we can do find the common denominator here and then uh, do the cross product and lo and behold we get the same expression that we got from the case where n was actually equal to 2. In fact, to see that, you can go ahead and take the square of both sides, and boom. So you see that very expression that we have used uh, to prove the case where n is equal to 2. All you do now is, again, to do just the um, factorization of this expression here. So you would get, um, again, 4 capital M minus little m times 4 little m minus capital M less than or equal to zero and finally we know this is always greater than or equal to zero it must be that this is less than or equal to zero but then that proves the statement of our problem so that was a very nice way to apply the Cauchy Schwartz inequality in a very nice problem so hope you enjoyed this problem and see you in our next video